Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the BricsCAD webinar. BricsCAD Pro, the 2D and 3D CAD for everyone. As stated before, please use the chat window to ask any questions you have during the webinar, and we shall answer them straight away. If you experience any video or sound quality, drop us a message on the chat, but please just refresh your webinar link, and that will put you back on track. Right, this morning, we are going to talk about the reason why more and more professionals are leaving behind the AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and starting to embrace BricsCAD, which brings you more CAD power for less cost. So let's get started. Your hosts today, both from the UK, are the talented Kin, our local BIM specialist from Bristol, and myself, Jazz Power, based in Birmingham. So who is Brixis? Brixis, the company that makes BricsCAD, is a global provider of affordable, modern CAD, BIM, MCAD, mechanical CAD, and CDE, common data environments brought to the market under the BricsCAD and Brixis 24-7 brands. Now, Brixis is part of Hexagon AB. And do you know what? BricsCAD is our best kept CAD secret, but that's changing as new customers are embracing BricsCAD. Now with over 300,000 active users in over 110 countries, and that number is growing at a very, very fast rate. Brixis is nearly a 20-year-old young company, you know, headquartered in the beautiful city of Ghent in Belgium, with 200 plus division employees across eight countries. The Brixis team is forever growing with new regional headquarters. We have a global presence, but with a local reach. Brixis has rapidly expanded its commercial beachhead into EMEA, Asia, North and Latin America due to the increasing customer demand. But those are, you know, literally who are fed up with license changes, lack of development in the current CAD software. BricsCAD services various types of industries across the globe, and that footprint is expanding. Here's just a few samples of a customer base. BricsCAD outputs to DWG included all BIM mechanical information. Working in 3D, BIM, mechanical, all contained within a DWG file format. And by the way, as a side note, Brixis is a founding member of the Open Design Alliance, ODA, and one of the largest technical contributors year over year. So now let's take a look at the, the BricsCAD family. More than a single product represents a family of CAD products. The cost-effective, modern, compatible alternative to the popular CAD or LT CAD, BIM or mechanical CAD products you may be using today, it is a family of products in the real sense. BricsCAD Lite for Image 2D, great for those coming from AutoCAD LT. BricsCAD Pro, which is this everything what this webinar is about for 2D, 3D, and so much more. BricsCAD BIM for all your building information modeling. And if you require advanced mechanical design tools, well, that's covered. That's what you get with the BricsCAD mechanical, all this in a single product. Now, this is what's available in the BricsCAD Ultimate Edition. By the way, is what you have access to when you download a free 30-day trial, all of the products in a single light package. That's under 500 megabytes, which we will share the link in the chat window. And when you buy your license card, it enables you access to specific editions of BricsCAD. You could be using BricsCAD Lite or Pro today and decide you need mechanical tomorrow. You know, those days are gone where you need a collection and install this product and install this solution and so forth. The license card will automatically give you that new environment. Again, it's a single application, which is great. 
Okay, so BricsCAD Pro is CAD software for 2D drafting, 3D modeling, and third party apps. I like to call this as the easiest path to 3D. It's the same intuitive patterns and workflows as the other CAD. Keep your training costs down for users moving from 2D to 3D. It's easy and intuitive. And if you're coming from AutoCAD, there's no need to change your printers, templates, blocks, sheet set, layout. The move to Bricks CAD because they are 100%, and I say 100% compatible. The man named aliases, system variables are the same in BricsCAD and AutoCAD. BricsCAD is based on the native DWG for the highest compatibility with the other CAD users across all industries. BricsCAD has an ACES based direct modular, which handles both solids and surfaces beautifully. As well as high compatibility to the other CAD, BricsCAD Pro includes AI and machine learning tools to improve productivity and increase efficient output, which reduces time spent on repetitive tasks, which is what we all want. You know, add power to your current CAD workflow, exactly what we used to do when I was in industry, and that's what you get with a broad third-party ecosystem called the BricsCAD Collective. So right now, we have over 400 industry-specific application products that run with BricsCAD and available on the Brix's App Store. So if you're doing custom development inside your company today, you can use the same tools that these companies have and bring your application over to BricsCAD as well. Right, we have a great BricsCAD Pro demonstration lined up for you. Take it away, Ken. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Jess, for that wonderful introduction. Let me just quickly share my screen. Right, I hope everyone's seeing my screen right now and you can hear me good. So let's go. So let's fire up BricsCAD Pro. Of course, hits the launcher and you will realize that I'm on BricsCAD Pro right now. So you will notice that the 2D drafting and the 3D modeling is highlighted in blue and the mechanical design and BIM requires an upgrade because I'm not using my ultimate license right here. And of course, we've got our free bricks cut shape, which is always free. And you can change the templates if you want to. But today, we're just going to do 3D modeling bricks cut pro. So, first up, it's the welcome page. It, the ribbons, I mean, it's so familiar to AutoCAD for all those, all those people out there using AutoCAD. And of course, the third party apps that we talked about, the Enscape and Passport Cat. So I'm going to show that in more detail later. We also have learning materials. So if you have any trouble, you can go back there. And of course, the third party ecosystem, which is very important um, to my understanding. And let's go on to the HVAC category. So this brings us to Google Chrome. That's my default internet browser. And you have literally hundreds of um, apps to choose from. I'm just filtering out the HVAC, HVAC one right now. But if, I, and if I close it and I expand this little drop down menu, you can see it's literally hundreds uh, distributed across the various versions of BricsCAD. So, yeah, we can see there are a lot of more categories. There are like rendering add ons like Lumion um, and, of course, AppWorks, Farm Professional by so you can just download them and install just like you would with any other add-ons or any other software and it will just appear in your ribbon like I have got in landscape. So if you want to start a new drawing, you can select the right template to use. You can, so you can make them beforehand. But for now, I'm just going to open my recent files because I have already imported a point cloud model of a building. So this is a simple point cloud scan of a two-story building imported into BricsCAD in the E57 LiDAR point cloud format. So let me just open up and show you. You have got many other formats that you can import in, such as RCS or PTS, whatever you like. So as long as you can import this, BricsCAD will translate that into a point cloud model. Um, and subsequently, it will make sure that it becomes an XREF before you can actually reference into BricsCAD 
through my memory cache. So it's stored in your local computer. And it's to make sure, for example, I've got a 13 gig model here, and this makes sure that it works really smoothly in BricsCAD. Now, if you find this model has a lot of colors going on, you can always zoom in and make sure that you change the color map as I did based on its elevation. So you can assign a color scheme based on its elevation or intensity of points. Now let me just zoom in and as it gets denser, you can see it's turned red. Now I'm just gonna do an earth color, a uniform earth color. So it's nicer, it's clearer. And if, when I zoom in, you see that it refreshes to display the points really sharply. So yeah, let's decrease the point cut size to the minimum so we can see each point in detail if you want to really, but if not, we can always zoom out and go on to increase the point size. And you notice there are these kind of green spheres going on. So um, they are actually point cut bubbles where the scanners are placed. And if I could just sort of um, double click onto it later on, it brings me this viewer that shows the spatial quality within. And you can always change the color modes as you wish. So I can always use this look from cube to orientate myself if you find orbiting using a, without a 3D mouse difficult like I do. So sometimes I just simply use the cube and it it is really handy because it gives me the straight elevation views that I need to. And whether it's perspective or not, you can always adjust it however you want. So over here, I'm going to crop out this lower part of the model. And this is something that we could do in BricsCAD Pro that you can crop untidy point cut models however you want and still adjust the size as you wish. It is simple and it's just really straightforward. So now with this floor over here, I like to start modeling this part of the building if you want to. So I make sure this snap is turned on to point clouds. And I'll just quickly snap against the point clouds to make a box. And if you make a mistake like I did, because it, this bricks cat is such a powerful 3D tool and it's an easy one for you to manipulate the solids, you can always adjust them however you want. So let me just snap them back. And over here, there you have it, a volume of box to represent the point cut model for that part of the building. And I'm just gonna quickly draw a section through, type this box, and you can see that you can have a section immediately of the point cut model. This is just so handy, especially once you get a survey model like this. And if you require more detail, you can always zoom in and you can even model a handrail uh, like I just zoomed in earlier. But let's just unclick this guy and save this model just in case we lose any information. Now with the same method, I have actually refined the model earlier and now I've just built everything um, all using 3D solids in BricsCAD of that point cut model that you just saw. So yeah, you can see I've developed the elevation with solid shading devices and I just want to paint them using the random materials that I just did. I'm making glass for example, and I'm going to put some concrete or maybe some metal or for the uh, solar shading devices. I mean, it's just really, it gives you the artistic license, especially in BricsCAD Pro compared to BricsCAD BIM. So what I've done actually is converting this, well, the, the point cut model into a, into a primitive solid model. And this is not the scan to BIM function that you may come across in our, on our website. That is reserved for BricsCAD BIM, which I'm gonna show in future webinar. But what I've just done is just a simple representation of a model in 3D in, in, in BricsCAD Pro. You notice that I'm, select, I'm selecting multiple solids here, and you can see that structural browser on my right is just highlighting. And this is for me to say I'm highlighting, I'm selecting specifically these solids, and I just can quickly paint them all at once. So I don't have to paint them one by one. All right, I'm just gonna finish up the painting over here. And yes, 
the last bits. I'm just going to finish up with bricks and stuff. So the structure browser on the right is really handy, especially when you have so many solids going on at, at the same time. And it is also handy when I can simply go into the structure browser and show the point cut model, just basically unhide it. So yeah, so this is how simple you can build a model out of point cuts manually. But what if I've got something I like to draft from scratch? I can always start a new drawing, like just, uh, just it, a rectangular thing. But the special thing about BricsCAD Pro is that you can extrude this 2D line into a 3D line, sorry, into a 3D geometry. And let me just quickly change the view out there. So I'm selecting a, a series of different views to choose from. Now, I've just moved everything to origin. And as I hover around, my little, my little part there says it's a polyline. So this is a really smart quote thing that we say about it. And it's quote, it's a machine learning thing that tells us more information about what the entity you're selecting. I just click the polyline again in the structure browser and just simply removed it. It's just the quickest way, I think, uh, if you have got too many things going on. So right now, I've just selected a, a mode that's called the edges mode. And I'm, again, hovering around here. I'm just going to stop here right, right now and, say, and it says it's solid, ed solid edge. So I'm just making sure that I'm selecting the right things as I go along. But if I select everything over here using the quad again, it's telling me everything in orange is edges. And what I can do is I can actually fillet them all together at once. I'll just give them a radius of 10, just in case um, it doesn't work. So here you go. We have a rounded edge of uh, 3D solid. And one special thing is we have something called auto parameterize, which basically gives all the parameters automatically. So right now, the dumb solid that I just modeled is now a parametric model. Can you imagine that? It's so handy. Just a click of a button and the whole thing is parametric. Okay, I just have one. All the parameters are all set by, by Brick's hat alone. So I don't have to think about anything else. And now I'm just going to use the manipulator, as you just saw, uh, quickly duplicate another object, maybe a distance away, maybe say, yeah, 1650. Oops. And I'm selecting the face, and it tells me it's just 1800 face to face apart. So this is quite handy to tell me. And at the same time, what happens is when I change the parameters, again, it changes the objects parametrically. So I'm not losing any parameters. They are both parametric objects at the same time. Now, with the same sort of uh, stuff that's going on over here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this base, lock it as I just did. It's hired in blue. And I'm just going to make some timber planks because this is actually the base of the uh, of a bench, of a park bench that I'm going to model. I'm just going to extrude the plank, cut the timber out, using a quad, and basically selecting the right functions to use. And using a stain manipulator, Instead of copying, I'm just going to use repeat. So you can see the repeat on the command line below. And I'm just going to make sure that I do that repeating along the same axis as I'm using right now. I'm just going to put R and one, one, one. And I can just repeat. So if you have a deck, it's helpful. I only use three of them over here. So it works just fine. Now, with that said, Let's go back to the parameters. I'm just going to remove all of them right here because I don't want it parametric anymore. I want the whole bench to be parametric. So now the whole bench in the click of a button is parametric. And what do you mean by that? It means that you can see all these purple faces being highlighted. It's just telling me what sorts of parameters are existing in this model at once. I can adjust the length. I can even adjust the thickness of the planks, however it wants. So you, this intelligent 
machine learning thing or an AI in Brits CAC is so smart enough to detect the parameters so that you don't have to spend time thinking about, oh, this is the parameter that I want or whatsoever. Everything's all done for you, all the constraints, et cetera. Everything's all set. You basically don't have to think about um, parametrics at all. So again, let's do the same exercise. I'm just gonna, um, well, let's save this guy first. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna paint this guy, maybe, maybe not actually. Um, yeah, maybe let, let's just paint, let, let's just paint this first. So I'm just gonna make sure I deselect the constraints because it's giving me the purple thing. And same stuff, go on to red bit, red bit materials. Concrete for the, uh, the, the bottom and simply timber for top. I don't think this is really detailed enough. And what I am going to do now, oh, yeah, I just got the render materials to my right. But if you find it annoying, I can just always hide it and close it. So what we have here is I have an L channel, actually, a, a, a metal L channel which I think I'm going to import into the model just to show you at this part, at the junction where the concrete meets the timber. I'm just inserting as a block because I think this gives a lot more detail when I render later on. So bear with me a second, I'm just going to find this L channel. You can always adjust the on-screen um, position or if you can turn on the dynamic UCS as I did, but nope, I'm just gonna put it over here so I can use the manipulator and adjust it manually. And I wanna basically demonstrate how easy to use this, this uh, manipulator is. If you accidentally get yourself stuck like me over here, you can always go back to the structure browser, but now it's all filtered out so nicely. It tells me this is the block, whereas the other things are all solid. So with that filter out, I can use the manipulator to again, bring them to wherever I want, but I am really determined to make this a very precise kind of uh, uh, model. So really, I don't want any kind of other tolerance. Um, I, I want it to be really accurate. So let's go here and I want to snap it against the face. So there you have it. It's so accurate now. It's literally 0.0. .0 mm of tolerance and i'm just going to do the same for the other side again l channel rotate it so this manipulator too it's you can scale it you can rotate it you can move it you can copy it you can repeat it you can do whatever you want with it and it's that intuitive and this is uniquely quick pack so over here i'll just make sure everything midpoint to midpoint Cool, looks awesome. Right, so I know some of you might ask things like, oh, can you explode things in, in, block, in this block? Yes, you can. So you can see I've just exploded the two blocks and just given me dozens of solids. And all these bolts and nuts are now solids. And also another burning question is, have you got something related to AutoCAD's dynamic blocks? Yes, we do have, it's called parametric blocks. And let me just import this parametric block for you to see. So this is a block reference bracket parametric, and this is our answer to AutoCAD's parametric, sorry, AutoCAD's dynamic blocks, um, but this time around it's in the form of a fixing, as you can see. And what's so parametric about this is that I have stored four different types of fixings within this block. But what's even more special about this in BritsCAD is that I can do a parametric blockify. And what this does is it's going to scan for everything in this entire drawing that's shaped like that fixing that, I, that we had over there and turn it into a parametric block. This is all done by artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, features. So over here right now, you can see there are 29 blocks. Previously it was 35, let me just do a control set. It's 35 and now it's 29 blocks. It's detected. 29, sorry, actually 28 fixings, excluding the other one. So when I select this guy, it's no longer a 3D solid. 
it is now a parametric block and I can just adjust this to however I want any hot screw to um, funny bolts if you want to I mean I'm not an expert in fixing but I'm just showing how powerful this parametric tool is and on the other side as well same thing I can change this to maybe an N4 bolt or something so yeah so there you have it this is the powerful thing about and the structure browser is telling me it's 28 blocks because I've removed the original one and seven solids. Now, let's do a quick render using a third party app, Enscape. I mean, there are several others as well, but uh, Enscape has this real time third party as well. So, um, so I'm just going to spin it around and uh, show you guys how, how beautiful and how detailed this uh, renderer is. It's a real time engine, real time rendering engine. I'm adjusting the, uh, the the solar uh, angles. I'm just going to quickly go back down and zoom into the um, fixings that we just had. I mean, I've not added any materials, you can notice. It's the default white material from Brick's Cat. So you can see um, I'm adjusting the sun, so we've got a nice sunset and the reflection of the light against the materials that we have. It's just beautiful. And the geometry, look at that. Right, let me just quickly close this and some of you might also ask oh what if i have a fancy model from rhino or from sketchup so not to worry i'm just going to quickly do a quick import over here and you can see we have so many others other formats that you can bring into from dae to sketchup to dgn whatever but i'm just going to bring the rhino in uh, just to quickly show you guys how powerful it is Okay, so now it's brought in, but I need to change the visual style, the modeling. And now this whole Rhino model, you can see it's converted into a native DW thing. And the NURPS curve, if you're familiar with Rhino, it's been converted so beautifully in the Brits cat. No triangulation, nothing. I'm just going to quickly move this back to the origin point and then save this as a DWG. Now that this is our reliable format, DWG. Um, I'm just going to save it over here. That's bench underscore rhino. Okay. So now I would like to quickly start again um, with another type of modeling, which is simple modeling, because I understand some people might ask, oh, is BricsCAD Pro just limited to basic 3D modeling? No, it, we've got tons of civil features. And one special thing is a tin surface, which I like to create by importing points in the form of TXT files. So you have a server here who pass you all these kind of files, you can quickly make a site model out of it. Now, here we are, a huge model in meters, I think. And I'm just gonna quickly spin around. I mean, I have a 3D mouse by connection, so it helps me with the orbiting and zooming in, as you can see. But you can always zoom in with your normal mouse. And I'm just gonna unhide some of the stuff that I've already prepared. So I have an image at the bottom, which is a TIFF image, a high-res TIFF image from this site, you can see. And also I have a tin boundary, which is made of a polyline. Now, what I am going to do is I can show you how powerful this tin feature is. I am going to edit the surface. I can add boundaries. And I'll click on the polyline to say outer. So I'm cropping out the part that I need, um, I don't need the other part of the, uh, the model, which is uh, just simply wasting my memory. And also, I'm just going to project the tin, or sorry, maybe a side image to tin um, with this tip image. So it's geotagged, it's at the right place. You can see the valley over here is made of trees and there's a path, etc. And it's just beautifully kind of um, assigned to the, um, the site, the tin. Now, with that said, I can also um, spin around and show you how crisp it is, but I'm just going to save this real quick. And I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maybe XREF, yeah, I'm going to XREF the previous building that we just did. So the pavilion, we can do whatever we want the settings. It's similar to AutoCAD, paste it there. And you can quickly see it's an XREF model. 
I can even move it. Again, I'm using my manipulator, which is quite helpful because it's such a big model and I need to do it along an axis. So I've got something cantilevering over the valley, which is quite sick. And I will also do an perhaps an import maybe of, um, of the benches that we just did. So again, X-Ref, uh, let me find my benches. This one, the parametric one that we just did in, um, in Brits. It's asking me to scale, which I say is one, it's a real, real scale. And also I'm just gonna import the, um, the one that we got from Rhino as well, why not? So we have two benches. right by the uh, pavilion. You can always adjust them, snap them according to the points, however you want. Um, it's all up to you. I've got my snap points turned on, um, but you can always adjust to however you, you wish you want to snap things on. Now, what you can also do is you can, um, let me just bring it over here, is that I'm gonna show you how to modify the tin surface in such a way that I can smoothen the surface so you can notice that you notice that the um, there's a conflict between the uh, the topo and the bench. What I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the radius and I'm going to smoothen this pin surface. So now I'm modifying this thing without the need of using um, the TXT file or whatsoever, because what I have here is the artistic license with Brits Capro to smoothen this part um, of the uh, of the site and hopefully just let it. Um, it quite nicely with the bench. I mean, I can do this forever, but let's just um, move on from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the solid out of the entire tin surface. So what it does really is it's going to create this huge solid model. You can you can choose a mesh surface if you want to uh, like get a solid because if I do a section cut over here, for example, because I want to do a 2D maybe a section drawing out of this place as a concept drawing whatsoever. You can also do this in Brick's Cat Pro. It's not just limited to, um, say, uh, in Brick's Cat Light, which I know some of you may, uh, may misunderstand. So now I have a thickness of the tin surface, which I did in earlier, and you can see it looks just so realistic and so accurate at the same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover around here. I'm just going to move this section line to see which part of the section looks a lot nicer than um, the others. I mean, it's just the vibe that I need to get in my concept drawing. Um, I, I understand that most of you guys do have this um, issue as well. It's just to get the vibe, and Brits Capital gives you the flexibility to do so. So over here, I'm just going to hover around my section object and it's section plane to block this section so I can get the 2D output of it. So I can either insert as a new block, but over here, I'm just going to replace this as a new file, a new DWG file. It's an external DWG file, so I can pass it to my other colleagues who's not working on this model and I'll press OK. So it does take some time, uh, depending on how um, complicated the geometry is. Well, but in this case, this is a huge model, by the way, uh, with so many faces and stuff. But let's just quickly open the, um, the file that we just saved. So it's new section, .dwg, and there you have it. Just like any other 2D drawing, we've got hatches, we've got lines. Everything is just a representation of the section that we just cut through earlier. I'm just going to open the layout. I can even do a scale factor as you would in any 2D drawing, really. And yeah, you can plot it, export it to PDF, whatsoever. I'm not going to do so. I'm just going to go back to my main model because what I am going to do now is I'm just going to select this solid and export it to Quick Motion. So we have. We can export to a new data smith, as you can see. 
Um, and this is the format that you can bring, one of the many formats that you can bring into um, Inmotion. So I'm just gonna do a quick export. And what it does as well is it's, it's really intelligent. It takes your XREF models. So the two benches and the pavilion, they are exported to, to new data Smith as well. And they're Joe tagged as well. So they have to share the same base point. I'm just gonna demonstrate to you in this case. Let me just fire up to Inmotion. Um, over here, you can import here, or you can do it down, down below actually. Let's cite the topography, make sure the scales are right and everything. And this real time renderer gives me the opportunity to render something really quick in five minutes. All I just need is the artistic license, as I just said. So yeah, the thin surface as a solid looks quite nice. It looks uh, rugged in the landscape, which is good. Um, it's floating high up slightly, but that's fine. All I need is just an image. Now, I'm just gonna import one by one um, the pavilion and the benches. And you can see the thing is still tech, share the same base point, so I don't have to readjust them. But if you ever have to readjust them in thin motion, you can also do that as well. I'm just gonna use the same material because they have all thicker materials. We painted um, the concrete, if you remember, of the same one. So. Um, Tim Motion was asking me uh, about importing the material. Of course, the Rhino bench, and you can see it's slightly floating for some reason. But I can just quickly, I can just quickly push this guy down by a meter and a half. Or I can select this over here, similar to our structure browser in Bricks Cat. So it's really user friendly. Okay, now the benches are set quite nicely on the terrain. I am going to do the most important thing now, which is the materials. Now, Twin Motion has really beautiful high res materials and it will be such a waste not to use them. Um, what I can do is I can replace them with the um, red wave materials that I just did in Bricks Cat. And immediately you can see the effect shining so prominently out here. And what I'm gonna to give to those fins, maybe a, a nice touch of core tin steel, and I'm just gonna adjust the scale so I can see the grain, the rugged grain. Yeah, looks good. Now, for the concrete, I'm just gonna put some nicely um, cast and site concrete, um, but I have to make sure the scale looks right. Yes, looks good. And lastly, the bricks. So you don't have to do things one by one. Whatever you, you, you've tagged or you've assigned to in bricks tag, and when you export it into Twin Motion, it will automatically change the material for you. So what I've done is um, assigning the materials and you can see the concrete on the bench is automatically based to the, um, to the one that I just used earlier. So what I'm going to do is just to select the right timber for this small bench. Um, yeah, just, just put some old planks over here. Oh, looks good. Looks really rugged. Now, the topography is white. It looks quite nice as a concept, but um, let me just paint them with grass. Why not? Since I've got two motion with me. So, so the right scale, maybe, hmm. oh, I choose a better grass. There you go, a lot leafier. Nice cantilever, nice shadow, as you can see. And all I need is some trees in the background. So I'll turn on the vegetation paint. And what I'm doing is I'm selecting the a series of um, trees to be painted on. So it's gonna, give me a, a random dose of these of, in, of these trees across this um, diameter. So what I want to achieve is this very nice kind of a pavilion situated in the mountains somewhere. Um, it looks very kind of vernacular. Um, and yeah, looks good. Right, so actually the more important thing is I would need maybe some human scale 
because I don't know how big this building is. I don't know how tall the trees are. So let me just put a path of people walking through. And I want them to snake through perhaps my, um, my benches, you know, climbing uphill perhaps and snaking through the, um, the benches and into the forest. Okay, street clothing doesn't look right. Maybe travel. Okay, I will do maybe a little bit more people. So I'll just make then walk downhill and I'll put some sculptural rocks by the side just to give that little flavour a little eye-catching kind of um, uh, sculpture kind of thing. Oops, sorry. I've moved a little too quick. But I'm just using my keyboard as a first-person player. And now I'm going to add more people. So it gives the right human scale, it looks good. And of course, to sort of exploit this artistic license, let me just make sure the, um, the sun angle works in our favor. I'm just gonna scan around, maybe push this a little north. This is something you can't do if you're too realistic, but now I've got a license, I'm gonna make it a little wet perhaps. slightly darker and I can even control the tree growth to split wherever the season is. So here we are, rainy season, people walking through this pavilion and there you have it. In five minutes or about five minutes I could bring Rick's cat geometry, Rick's cat pro geometry and into twin motion to give myself a real-time realistic render with everything set. Solar, people, trees, things that were taken ages in Photoshop. And done. I've now exported that image. I'm just gonna fire this up in a default kind of a photo viewer. And here we are. This is a high res image that we got now. I'm just gonna zoom in. It's not too bad. And that's it. Um, it's a high res image that you've got here in five minutes. And I hope you enjoyed this webinar. So over to you, Jess. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely um, loved, loved the guy walking with his suitcase uh, in, in the forest. Uh, that was a bit of a treat, uh, I, I can tell you that. Okay, so uh, let's, let's carry on. So you saw how easy it is with BricsCAD. And, and by the way, we're only scratching the surface. You know, there's so much more. And let's take a look at some of the reasons why you should con consider. Oh, there we are. Sorry about that. Perfect. Uh, folks, I really appreciate uh, for those of you still staying on. Uh, I know we've kind of gone a little bit over time. But uh, I'll wrap this up as quickly as possible. So why is Bricks CAD unique? You know, we offer so much more compared to the other CAD. You know, Bricks CAD represents an entire family of products in a single installable package. You know, I really implore you guys and folks to kind of check out that download link in the chat window. It offers flexible, affordable licensing and a compatible and learnable command interface. You know, BricsCAD, you know, you can use straight away based on the experience of your, you know, your prior CAD knowledge, which is, which, is, which is great. Flexible licenses is one of our ethos. You know, Bricsist offers a single license as shown on the previous slide. You also can have a network option on both subscription and perpetual. You can pursue whatever licensing path makes most sense to you for your business. You can buy perpetual, which we still offer and our competition doesn't. Considering all of these different options together, the flexibility allows you to run BricsCAD in a way that makes sense for your business, rather than having to make your business conform to a licensing scheme. BricsCAD is a familiar CAD. You know, leverage what you already know today and upgrade to BricsCAD, which is modern, compact and reliable software. 
And we're part of Hexagon AB, so our siblings include Leica Geosystems, Intergraph, Brown and Sharpen, MSC Software, just to name just a few. We're committed to your productivity by creating tools that excel just like you. Folks, on behalf of the Brixis team, we'd like to thank you all for taking the time today on this gorgeous Indian summer we're having in the UK. But wherever you guys are, I'm hoping you're having a great, great day, great weather. But any questions, please drop us in the chat window. Or if you would like, just drop us an email. Thank you. Take care.